Thank you for choosing LiftMaster. This video will provide an overview of how to install our LMW EKITU Monitored Wireless Edge Kit with a resistive edge sensor on a LiftMaster gate operator. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. Two monitored safety entrapment protection devices must be installed at each entrapment zone in a gate installation. The inherent reversing system built into each LiftMaster UL325 compliant gate operator counts as one. Our LMW EKITU wireless edge kit installed with our monitored resistive edge sensors satisfies the requirement for the second. For demonstration purposes, we're installing the LMW EKITU with an L504AL edge on a slide gate to protect the close entrapment zone only. In a real installation, you must ensure that all entrapment zones are protected. The gate operator is our model CSL24U. Your installation may be different. We'll start by moving the gate to the fully opened position. Next, disconnect all electrical power to the operator, including AC, solar, and battery power sources, and make sure the operator power switch is off. If the timer is enabled, disable it. On the CSL24U, we'll unplug the wire harness from J15 on the control board and turn the AC power switch off. Follow the directions in the manual for the product you are servicing. The L504AL edge comes with a pre-assembled four foot long edge and an aluminum mounting channel. Remove the edge from the channel. This edge will protect the close entrapment zone, so we'll mount it on this front edge of the gate. You must mount the edge to a flat, even surface. Any bends in the edge may prevent it from working properly. Mark the aluminum channel one inch from each end and then make a mark every 11 and a half inches along the inside of the channel on the center groove. Drill holes into the aluminum channel with a quarter inch drill bit at each marked location. Deburr the holes. Clamp the aluminum channel to the leading edge of the gate. Mark the gate where the aluminum channel holes are. Remove the channel. We will be using a number 12 3 quarter inch hex washer head self-drilling screw. For this type of screw, we'll use a 5 30 seconds drill bit to drill holes through the marks. Your hardware may vary, so use the appropriate drill bit size for your hardware. Secure the aluminum channel to the gate using your selected hardware. The edge needs to be mounted in the channel with the wire at the top and the drainage drip at the bottom. The cap for the edge has several rubber knockouts which allow you to select which direction to route the wire. Since we are mounting the wireless edge transmitter to the front of the gate, we will punch out the knockout on this side of the cap. Feed the wire through the hole, pulling until there is no slack, and reinstall the cap onto the edge. You may choose to route the wire through the gate by drilling a hole through the channel and the gate. Drill a hole two inches from the bottom of the channel using the same 5 30 seconds drill bit. Feed the edge into the aluminum channel with the wired end facing up. Secure the edge using a hex head screw through the hole you just drilled at the bottom of the channel. Our LMW EKITU comes with a transmitter with mounting bracket, a receiver with mounting bracket, two AA lithium batteries, HACO connectors, an I2C interface board, and hardware. You'll need access to the control board inside the gate operator. On the receiver, use a small screwdriver to loosen the screw that connects the bracket to the housing and remove the bracket. Remove the tape from one side of the receiver so you have access to the board inside. 
This CSL24U has an expansion board connected to the control board by a wire harness. Unplug the wire harness from the expansion board. The I2C interface board has a connector that will plug into the expansion board. Turn the I2C board over and put the spacer screw through the hole. Slide the spacer over the screw. Plug the I2C interface board onto the connector on the expansion board. Secure it in place by tightening the screw. There are two connectors on the I2C board. Plug the wire harness from the control board into one. The wire harness from the receiver will be plugged into the other later. Where you mount the receiver will depend on the type of operator. Consult the LMW EKITU manual for the appropriate mounting method and location. We are following the instructions for the CSL24U. Mount the receiver bracket to the operator chassis using the provided hardware. For the CSL24U, we will remove this knockout and route the wire to the I2C board. Be sure to tighten the strain relief. Plug the wire harness from the receiver directly onto the second connector on the I2C board. Reconnect power to the operator. This includes plugging the battery wire harness into the J15 plug and turning the AC power switch on. The blue power LED will come on, indicating that you now have power to the receiver. Do not mount the receiver yet. We still need to complete programming. On the transmitter, use a small screwdriver to loosen the screw that connects the bracket to the housing and remove the bracket. Remove the tape from one side of the housing and open the transmitter. Install the provided AA batteries. Locate the open-close dip switches. They allow you to select the direction being protected. We're protecting the close direction on this gate, so we'll move one switch to close. We'll wire our edge to the terminal block next to this switch. Press and release the Learn button on the receiver board. The red LED will come on, indicating you're in programming mode. Press and release the Learn button on the transmitter. The red LED on the receiver will blink four times. If we had additional transmitters, we would follow the same steps to program each one. To exit programming mode, press and release the Learn button in the receiver. Programming mode times out automatically after 60 seconds. You can program a maximum of four transmitters to each receiver. Move the gate so the edge is at its furthest point away from the operator. This will allow you to confirm there is a clear line of sight between the operator, where the receiver will be installed, and the edge, where the transmitter will be installed. Disconnect all electrical power to the operator again to ensure the gate does not move while mounting the transmitter. Do not close the cover of the operator yet. Choose a location to mount the transmitter. It should be at least 3.28 feet above the ground and close enough to connect to the edge using the wire provided with the edge. Attach the transmitter mounting bracket to the gate. Do not locate the transmitter where it will come into contact with anything during gate movement, such as rollers. Remove the HACO plug from the transmitter and keep the nut handy for later use. Choose a HACO connector to route the edge wire through. You can wire a maximum of two edges to each transmitter. We're connecting one edge, so we'll use the HACO connector with one hole. Pull the wire slack through to the inside of the transmitter. Secure the HACO connector using the nut you removed from the original HACO plug. Locate the dip switch inside the transmitter that we previously set to close. Remove the terminal block next to that dip switch and insert the wires. Polarity is not important. Use a small screwdriver to tighten the screws in the terminal block, securing the wires. Reconnect power to the operator. 
plug the terminal block back onto the board inside the transmitter. The operator will beep once to indicate the edge has been learned. Test the connection by applying pressure to the edge. The red LED on the transmitter will flash. The corresponding open edge or close edge LED on the gate operator control board will also flash, showing the edge is functioning properly. If any of the LEDs do not flash correctly, make sure all wiring connections are secure and that a LiftMaster monitored edge is installed. Also check the dip switches to confirm the edge direction has been set correctly. Disconnect all electrical power to the operator again to ensure the gate does not move while mounting the transmitter. Wrap the edge wire into a service loop and tuck into the housing. Close the transmitter housing and secure with the provided screws. Remove the tape from the housing. Tighten the HACO connector to make the transmitter watertight. Secure the transmitter housing to the mounting bracket using the provided screw. Close the receiver housing using the provided screws. Secure the receiver housing to the mounting bracket with the provided screws. Close the cover of the operator and restore power. Open the gate. Perform a functional test by placing a rigid obstruction in the path of the gate travel so the edge sensor will make contact. Run the operator. The gate will stop and reverse upon contact with the obstruction. Your installation is complete. LiftMaster offers an extensive selection of monitored safety entrapment protection devices. To learn more about our other edge sensor products, visit liftmaster.com and search for gate operator accessories. Thank you for choosing LiftMaster.